let's move on to medical devices, IVDs, regulatory. What are the key differences um, when it comes to regulatory scope for medical devices, IVDs, and drugs? Well, uh, drugs, whether they are uh, small molecules or biological uh, or radio pharmaceuticals, every uh, category has a uh, uh, special uh, approval process, let's say, uh, and uh, commissions uh, are asking for expert advice when uh, the uh, product is a vaccine or a radiopharmaceutical, and uh, this can be taking a little more time. Uh, but for small miracles, usually if uh, it's not an early phase, uh, the course of the uh, approval is the one expected. Uh, regarding the IVD and medical device, actually there's uh, not a big difference uh, <laughs> regarding uh, how they are looked at by the uh, ethics committee or by the uh, competent authority and uh, the which applies to medical devices applies as well to uh, in vitro diagnostics so uh, they are looking at almost the same uh, way regarding the uh, importation process regarding the uh, protocol regarding the uh, way of the monitoring should be so they are not making, uh, the authorities are not making a big difference uh, in uh, examining these requests. Of course, there are some guidelines that are different, how to conduct clinical trial for IVD, and which are applicable only for IVD. But since the, uh, there are a lot of similarities between the clinical development plan of uh, uh, medical device and the guidelines of conducting clinical trial of an IVD, they are considered as one, let's say. Okay. So you don't have, like, we have IVDR and MDR, This you don't have that, like, no. difference? No. No. Okay. Interesting. Okay, and um, is there a need um, for legal representation over there? Um, because, you know, for example, for us, when sponsors are coming outside of um, the EU, then they will need one here. Um, is it the same um, when you're thinking of coming to the MENA region? Do you need legal representative? Well, actually, for sponsors that are located outside of uh, the MENA region or uh, on the scale of an individual country, they needed to have uh, the uh, letter of uh, authorization given to the CRO that will be representing them and introducing on their behalf the uh, request for approval and conducting the study on their behalf. Uh, a sponsor can be uh, located outside of the country, but should be uh, authorizing some legal entity present in the country to uh, apply on their behalf. Uh, it is mandatory in uh, the majority of countries. Yeah, so you, you, you need authorized representative. It can be like hired for the purpose of the study. It's the CRO can be representing the sponsor for the purposes of the study uh, and it's not requested that they uh, appoint some other company or they have activities in that, com in that country for uh, initiating the uh, submission process or the whole project process. Oh, interesting. And um, how, how do you guys handle things like patient reimbursement? Well, we are doing uh, our uh, best to, to apply the uh, affordable technology for uh, following uh, patient expenses. Some regulations in uh, our uh, countries are uh, forbidding the uh, remuneration of patients. Like uh, we have to uh, really uh, be careful when applying 
uh, for an approval uh, stating reasonable amounts of patient uh, reimbursement, patient expenses. Usually what is admitted is uh, to reimburse the travel expenses and the lunch for the, the visit, and not uh, more uh, than that. And of course, for following uh, the regulation, the amount should be uh, meeting uh, and reflecting the local yeah. uh, prices and the local reality. And uh, we as a company, uh, we are running multiple trials together and simultaneously, and we uh, should be uh, reimbursing on time the patients for ensuring the adherence to the protocol and they to minimize uh, the, the dropout for these financial reasons, we have to process all the uh, reimbursement requests. Uh, we do it in collaboration with the site and uh, like the reimbursement cycle is between two and four weeks maximum. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so how about site contracts? How are these handled? Oh, site contracts are seeing many changes this last year. <laughs> and one, when we began activity, site contract had nine pages. When we began activity in 2009, a clinical trial agreement could be covering all the aspects uh, that, uh, like the responsibilities of the investigators, yeah. the uh, publication policy, the data policy, all these aspects that must be covered by clinical trial agreement, they yeah. could stand on a document of nine pages. Now, the shortest clinical trial agreement is 30 pages. So, uh, like legislation is uh, evolving, uh, Industry is evolving, requests of the sponsors are uh, evolving. So this is reflected in, in the, this number of uh, pages. Regarding negotiation, usually it is uh, like our uh, startup and regulatory associates are uh, uh, entering in uh, contact uh, with the, the site and uh, proposing the protocol. Uh, assessing with the medical monitor how difficult it is, uh, uh, speaking with the doctors, having some orientation. Then we uh, see how much the sponsor is uh, budgeting for uh, these activities mentioned in the protocol. How are the fair market values in the country and uh, making something respectable uh, coming out from this uh, consultation and uh, putting it uh, on, uh, on paper. This process can be lasting uh, one week when everybody is uh, very happy and uh, understands and see, uh, and of course, it's a question of availability as well. Uh, but it can be lasting more than one month in, in some complicated situations, let's say. What key factors should sponsors thinking about the MENA region for their clinical trials know about? Well, there are uh, many factors depending on the uh, indication, depending okay. on the therapeutic uh, area, depending on the targets to be achieved. Uh, like first is that there are in some indications uh, the pool of patient, uh, naive patients here in uh, MENA regions uh, regarding many therapeutic areas. There is a potential which is untapped and the sponsors in San Diego, California, they don't know about it or they are not at all uh, aware of the possibility of um, local companies and local uh, health uh, workers, meaning investigators, possibility for bringing them solutions uh, tailored to, to, to their uh, needs. 
And uh, as well, as you mentioned earlier, uh, compared to European countries, uh, when uh, time to market is very important, the timelines are shorter in the yeah. uh, region than other regions. Uh, of course, if we uh, look from the economic uh, perspective, the uh, uh, overall cost of a project uh, would be uh, 30 to 40 percent less expensive than when it is uh, conducted in uh, Western Europe, which That's is good. making uh, a significant uh, cut in the expenses and uh, uh, for so, biotechs that are, for example, coming from phase two to phase three uh, and uh, or they are pivotal phase and uh, every dollar is counting. So this can be also important for us, a category of companies. Um, I know you mentioned earlier that um, medical devices and IVDs are treated the same or mm -hmm. similar, right? Yes. Um, so specifically about medical devices in the MENA region, are they treated the same as in Europe or US? Well, uh, Look at that uh, in the same uh, manner. So, uh, but the review process, as uh, for clinical trials, is uh, I think uh, much uh, more uh, easy. Uh, like manufacturer of a medical device in the US or in Europe now, they uh, have the obligation of uh, conducting uh, the uh, post. Uh, uh, marketing surveillance uh, studies and uh, giving uh, the uh, updated uh, uh, safety uh, updates uh, from studies that are uh, must be occurring on the, uh, on the field. Mm -hmm. In North Africa, for example, uh, the, uh, this obligation is still not uh, in force. They are, the authorities are asking only for a safety update that can be coming from a literature review or from uh, like small observations or, or case compilation. And it's not the same uh, uh, level of requirements as uh, in uh, uh, the uh, US or the uh, or in Europe, but yeah. for clinical uh, trials, uh, the uh, difference of uh, how it is uh, seen in Europe and how it is uh, seen in uh, North Africa is uh, minimal, and uh, actually we don't have specific regulations for. Uh, clinical trials in medical devices, like it is uh, uh, looked at as a medical device, but the process of approval is uh, the same, having the clinical development program uh, plan uh, seen by ethics committees and then approved by the regulatory authorities. Uh, the only consideration is uh, the uh, fees are less for uh, clinical uh, medical devices, depending on the class of the medical device, uh, but the review process is actually the same. Okay, so you have the same classification, low risk plus uh, until high yes. risk. Yeah. Yes, the, the European classification is for Yeah, no. it's the same. And the low risk, um, do they need to go through the same regulatory approval process or can manufacturers do their own declaration for class one, for example? Well, everything uh, must be going to the uh, review of the uh, administration. So they it, declarations are not receivable, should be going through the, uh, any plan should be going through the uh, administrative approval process. Interesting. And um, how is the patient recruitment over there? How likely are patients uh, to participate in a trial? Well, 
patient recruitment is a multifactorial uh, concept. Uh, many factors are influencing uh, this, and uh, the uh, advantage in uh, MENA region is that there is a, a special uh, relationship between the health uh, giver and the patient. Mm -hmm. like it is from cultural uh, reasons, almost a pater paternalistic relationship. So uh, what the doctor is saying, the patients would be uh, adhering to that and uh, carefully following the indications given by the doctor, which is, we, we don't see a very high uh, dropout uh, rates, like retention rates in our studies are really uh, higher than the uh, medium of uh, other uh, countries. We observe that in the metrics uh, of the studies, multinational uh, studies were participating and uh, our uh, sites are ensuring uh, high patient retention for the reason I already explained it and as well, maybe for uh, the fact that the standard of care in some chronic uh, pathologies is not the same as it is in Europe and the participation in trials is uh, bringing to the patient and his family solutions that they cannot be affording otherwise. Yeah. So, uh, so these are the factors that... Uh, are influencing this. Yeah. Mm. And um, what would you say would be the therapeutic areas that are most common to find a good patient population? Well, uh, in our countries, we are very welcoming people. So I would say all the, the, all the <laughs> of course. Yeah, but uh, uh, we uh, can be objectively uh, saying that in uh, uh, all uh, which is related to cardiovascular health, uh, okay. cardiology, and uh, uh, other uh, types of studies uh, involving uh, the uh, circulatory system as well, uh, uh, the uh, rare diseases and, uh, in uh, neurology, uh, uh, pediatric diseases as well. Um, we are seeing an interest that is uh, now raising regarding the uh, immuno-oncology. So uh, now many sponsors are asking for that. Mm. Um, quality can be found and maintained with many sites and in many uh, specialties. So uh, we can be really finding good sites and good investigators in almost every uh, therapeutic area. Okay. And um, last question I have today is on technology. I know we've not had the best connection today, but you're not also based in the MENA, you are in Serbia. So <laughs> um, let's talk about, <laughs> or oh, are you? I don't know where, where are you today? No, no, today, today, today I'm in Serbia. Yeah, I am yeah. in Serbia and talking to you in Serbia. But uh, you know, in the most advanced uh, uh, countries, uh, internet providers can be having their days down, let's say. So okay. we, but usually the infrastructure is yeah. uh, comparable uh, in North Africa as well, if this is your question like yeah. infrastructure regarding technology uh, is advanced and uh, like uh, optic fiber for uh, uh, high speed internet is uh, available and the hospitals are interconnected. Uh, their databases uh, can be, uh, of course, after uh, certain requests, <clears throat> this should be arranged. No, so the sponsor based in US, for example, can have multiple sites in the MENA region and you can still receive access to your data and stuff like that. So there's no technology to constraints that someone should look out for in the MENA region. No, no, actually there is uh, for... Uh, uh, 
uh, data privacy reasons, uh, some um, requests to make. Actually, they are not requests, they are notifications uh, for processing the data. It's in accordance with the local loads and the global loads of the data privacy protection. Uh, but uh, data can be accessed without any uh, problem, technical problem, I mean. Uh, optic fiber is spread everywhere and the infrastructure regarding telecommunication is uh, working fine uh, in normal situations. So uh, there's yeah. uh, no uh, problem to be expected from uh, that uh, point. No constraints. I like to talk about this topic, especially, you know, coming from Africa, um, people never expect that, you know, when you say we are actually technology driven, you know, as a nation entirely, um, we have mobile phone, um, money transfer and everything like some places did not even know that when I tell people that. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I completely understand. Like uh, people in uh, some uh, Western uh, countries uh, don't know that uh, in uh, some of the African countries, uh, like uh, in Ethiopia or in parts of Kenya, there is uh, mobile phone payments. People don't uh, have cash anymore. And uh, we, like the Africa, North Africa, uh, has followed the uh, progress of uh, technology and uh, communication, new uh, internet uh, communication technology. And it is now um, affordable and uh, yeah. can be uh, put in uh, the uh, application and put uh, for the benefit of conducting uh, uh, complex projects such yeah. as the trials. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. I think it's a really important topic. I mean, with um, mobile phone money transfer, Africa is pandemic ready. I mean, we didn't use cash for a very long time um, because technology-wise, um, the nation's quite, it's quite ahead, you know? So yeah, that's why I brought it up again because I feel I feel like it's quite an important topic, especially in clinical research. You know, you have several databases, multi trials. You have sites located everywhere, and sometimes people are thinking, okay, what about the communication? Are we going to be able to communicate with each other? How is the transfer of documents, data, and stuff like that? Yeah. So I think it's. Yeah. yeah, you know that the reality and the world is uh, evolving uh, faster than uh, the perception of uh, uh, people. So uh, things are really advancing in a very high uh, pace. And uh, uh, as you mentioned, uh, like money transfer and uh, uh, the payment by QR codes and uh, things like that are a reality of everyday life in Africa and yeah. uh, in Western countries. Maybe people don't realize that because of uh, some image uh, brought by mainstream media or some old concepts that uh, are uh, actually de passé, let's say. So the, the, the fact is that uh, Africa and all the world is in very very fast moving yeah absolutely agree um yeah so thank you so much that was all i had from my end today unless you have anything else you would like to add about clinical trials in the mena region no thank you very much for the invitation i think that we uh, have uh, covered uh, all the uh, areas uh, yeah. that uh, are of interest for uh, your uh, YouTube uh, channel viewers that yeah. uh, I am sending uh, regards to and uh, this channel uh, actually is very popular within our organization and our employees are organizing once a month uh, one uh, uh, cinema session to uh, look and discuss uh, 
one of your episodes. So uh, please continue bringing to life uh, such an interesting uh, content. That's absolutely amazing. We'll do our question and answer session and we'll ask your employees to answer everything that we've gone through. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we can do that. No, I'm really, I'm really pleased with that. That's, ve that's very kind of you. And I hope we can keep it up and come up with interesting topics as well for everyone, for all our viewers. Thank you so much, Shihab, for joining us today. This was our pleasure as well. We appreciate You're it. Nice welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Thanks, everyone. And that's it from us today. Bye.